Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Dyson Sphere program. And in the, since the, since last week I technically finished the game, um, but this week was more about sort of polishing things up, or polishing things up a bit, and uh, trying to get things done a little bit more effectively. So when I say technically finished the game, I mean I came in here and I did the end game science research. This one over here, the mission complete, which takes 4,000 white science, and then popped up a box saying, "Congratulations, you have done it." Since then, I, I sort of thought, I thought, okay, that's technically finished the game, but I, but my my end goal is to have done all of the research and um, well, excluding any infinite researches, and to have finished building a Dyson sphere. So in the last stream, I carried on with doing all the researches, and as you can see, I've now done every single one of the basic technology researches. But there's still quite a few of the um, the upgrades available. So Mecha Core up here is this is this is a, an infinite one. I've done one of those. So that's fine. So see, that was number five. This is now level seven is available. So I've done six, which is the first infinite one. So that one that one's good. That one's done. Down here, same here, same here, same here. This and this one is still working. This, this I think might be the first infinite one. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, the point is, I'm working th working through these, and I'm going to try and f and I'm going to try and finish off all of the non-infinite ones. And I've got lots of them queued up up here. So working towards that quite nicely. The other part of, of my uh, personal goal condition was that I wanted to finish off this Dyson sphere, and that's quite a bit harder. So as you can see here, I've now built it up to be. I built up the entire structure in planning mode, which is all of this green nonsense. Um, and I'm pretty sure. No, that looks like there's a bit of a gap there. Um, so, but pretty much all of this has been has been has been planned and specked out. Uh, if I yeah, if I mouse over this, and you can we actually I've I've missed some chunks out here. So let's have a quick look at that. So presumably, is that too big? No, these aren't too big in areas. I don't know why those weren't selected. So we've got that now. Right. Uh, okay. So that now looks like probably all of it. I will find out another time. But the idea is now that we are we've got all of it planned out. So that means the factory is working towards building this up as quickly as it can. The limit, there are two limiting factors to this. The first one is how quickly I can send out these rockets that go out and they build up the um, the nodes around the... Well, I don't, don't know where these ones are going. But they build up the nodes, all of these sort of cross-section uh, points where the, where the struts join up. And then once they've built up a node, like um, has happened here, uh, they will then... No, that's a bad example. Once they've built up a node, as has happened... <laughs> are, there, are there any that are in partial? Yeah, here. So this node has been finished, but these struts are still under construction. So once you've built the node up, you then you then carry on launching rockets into there to build up these struts that go across here and support the sphere. And then once you've done, uh, and then whilst you're doing that, you can also then send your uh, solar sails over that are that are in the currently in the swarm around here and are being launched out in a hail, as you can see over here. And they will be sent out and installed into the uh, into the solar sails uh, into the sorry into the shell here to make up the, the the entire Dyson sphere. So over here we've got quite a large area that this is this is completely finished. If I select one of these, you can see it's got 230 out of 230. That's done. This area is 4,600 out of 4,600 and is generating 69 megawatts. So great, that's now finished. And speaking of generating power, if we look over here, we're now generating a total four and a half gigawatts from the shell, which is pretty good. Um, it's, it's getting more and more, and that's more than half the power that's being generated by all of my solar stuff. It's still not quite enough to satisfy the factory, though. We still need we need to get up to 5.6 gigawatts to satisfy everything that's in this um, in this system. But we're getting there, and. At the rate the uh, the sails are being pulled out of the swarm, I'm optimistic that we will we won't have another power crisis. There was a power crisis at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the stream, but it was one that sort of sorted itself out just by getting more and more solar sails launched because we'd we'd hit a point where enough had been put into the into the shell. But now I think it's quite likely that even if the shell did swallow all of these solar sails, I think I would probably still have enough power because I remember hearing somewhere, and I'm not certain of this, so don't take this as gospel, but I think that a solar sail in the shell produces half the amount of energy that a solar sail in the swarm does, but it lasts forever, so in the long term it'll produce more. But a smaller, greater kilowatt hours, smaller wattage. Uh, so if we look over here, we'll see that the the difference is even if even if we take turn all of the swarm into shell, that would still be another two gigawatts being produced because it's half of that. So we still have six and a half gigawatts available. So I think that power is basically now a solved problem, and we can just strip the um, the solar cells out of here as fast as we want and build up here. So. I am trying to pull them out as quickly as I reasonably can. I don't know how reasonably I quickly I can pull them out because at the moment the limiting factor is launching rockets and getting these getting the nodes built up. So speaking of which, 
we have a system here that is indeed launching rockets, and they're going out at a, they're going out at what I think is quite a good rate. Um, I think it was something like 22 per minute. There's a production graph I can find somewhere in here. So let's have a look at that. Here we go. This, yeah, they're all per minute values. Let's look at look over the last hour, um, and then find down here somewhere. Here we go, small carrier rockets. So we're launching 29 per minute and we're consuming 30 per minute. I'm not quite sure how that works um, because it's going straight out. As soon as they're produced, they're then passed into here and launched immediately. So I I don't I don't know. Uh, also, this is a much flatter than... Uh, these graphs don't make sense. But anyway, we'll not, we'll not worry about that too much. As you can see across here, we've got... Yeah, a rate... They're being produced at a rate. It's not a very... It's not a very good rate. There's a lot of gaps in in the production along here, uh, which worries me a little bit. Zoom in a bit. Um, yeah, I, it seems to come through in flurries, which is... An, an, they're being used up quite steadily, but they're being made in flurries. Maybe this is something to do with the length of the belts or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, we are making them at a, at a rate of about 18 to 20 a minute, which isn't great, to be honest. And it, it, to be honest, it, it is no faster than it was at the beginning of the episode. And that's despite me having gone in and put lots and lots of effort into trying to make them quicker, which is a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> so... There are a number of things that go into making one of these rockets, and there's lots and lots of resources required. Over here, we've got plenty of we've got, seem to have plenty of coal, plenty of iron ore, plenty of these motors. So this, this is all stuff I didn't touch last time. We've got plenty of de plenty of deuterium now, which is rather nice, and and, and this one and, and hydrogen has never oh no deuterium yeah has was a problem a couple of weeks ago. We sorted that. The problem currently seems to be these blue circuits that just aren't being made. So. Um, the, yes, as I say, that's the current problem. Uh, so I'll, I'll get I'll get distracted a little bit by that because that is my way. But if we can come we can come over here, we can look in here, and we can see that okay, they are being generated really rather slowly. But that, I mean, they're being made, but yeah, very very slowly. And it's limited by how fast these are being made, which is limited by how fast these are being made. Uh, it was by how fast these are being made, but I've sped that up. And that's limited by how fast this glass is coming through, which is limited by how fast the stone is stone is capable of coming through. So maybe how, how is our stone supply? I've yeah, so maybe if I come along here, if I do an upgrade of this belt like that, chomp, that whole thing, and we can get twice as much stone coming down there. So we can then get twice as much glass coming through, and maybe that'll mean we'll get twice as much of that coming out at the other end. I mean, I say we can get twice as much glass coming through, that assumes we've got enough machines along here to actually produce the uh, glass twice as fast, which I don't think we have. There's also a missing um, inserter over here, so we'll put that in. So yeah, these are. It, it actually does seem to be churning through all of the stone now, still, despite the uh, despite the increase in speed. So, okay, maybe that's going to maybe that's going to help quite a lot here. But anyway, yes, this is this is the way the game goes now. You 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 go to the point where you um where where your limiting factor is, which is how fast we're launching out these rockets. Then you look at the belts and you go, okay, what am I short of? Okay, I'm short of blue circuits, so I'll come over here and I'll go, why are there no blue circuits? It's a shortage here. And you just sort of push the you push the problems back up and up and up and up the stream until you find up the chain until you find where the where the actual problem is. Fix that, and then it'll bump everything will be sped up a little bit down that chain, and then you find something else is then the limiting factor, and then you fix that and so on. And that goes on for basically forever until you finish the game. Um, so it's a case of even even if I got to the point where they where we were getting a solid belt of these uh, of these rockets coming through, which we seem to. Hang on, what? Oh no, that's one of the inputs. <laughs> even if we got a solid belt of these rockets coming through, then we, we'd still have something else that we'd need to upgrade to get that sorted. Yeah. So the problem is still down to how fast the blue circuits are made. So hopefully the changes I've made over here will speed that up a little bit. We'll get them through slightly faster. It'll make everything a little bit better, and that'll hopefully sort the problem out there. So this is what I spent the time doing last last um, uh, in the last stream. I was going around finding these sort of problems and solving them. So there are a couple of major improvements I've made. Let's go. Let's go and see if we can find um, an example of that. One of the things I did was upgrade to the big mining drills, and these are fantastic. So I was running out, of, I discovered I was running out of stone. So I upgraded to, I went around at the planet and I found some more stone veins, and I put in these, and these are the, the, the next generation advanced mining machines, as the, as the description says. These are amazing, you just drop them in like this, and they'll cover an entire, well, nearly an entire patch. I couldn't quite get this whole one to be covered by that. Let's see if, I, could I put in, I could put in another one here like that to take up the other three, and uh, I suppose I, I might as well. 
The thing you need to remember, and I kept forgetting, is that whilst these are very, very, um, just drop them in and they will start working, you do actually need to power them as well, so I kept forgetting that. But once you've done that, they then start to do this sort of wafty, wafty, zappy, zappy thing, and they'll pull the ore out of the ground very, very quickly into an internal storage bunker, um, which can then be supplied by automatically by the drones. So you just drop, you don't need to worry about a tower, belt, anything. You just drop one of these things in, and as long as there's a tower somewhere on the planet requesting that stuff, which of course there is for, um, uh, stone because we're getting through loads of it then the drones will just fly over grab it from there and take it off to the what whatever tower needs it they are really really easy they're fantastic and people have been recommending them in chat for ages and telling me all about them and i'm going yeah that sounds great and next time i set up a mine i will definitely use one of those but i'm not going to go out and change mines that i already have so this session i actually went out and set up some new mines so we now actually we now have these things uh, do they have a an input for belts they do I think they do. Is that a belt input? Let's find out. Yeah, so you could even have a belt running in like that. So I could have used normal a normal mining drill to pick up those last three patches. If I wanted to, I could probably bring this around like that. And it'll pull the ore out of the, the 109,000, or the how much, the 300 out, out of here. Down the belt here, and we'll put it into this one instead. I and mean, there's no actual useful reason to do that. That's quite interesting. The belt is going in an opposite direction. So we've got this this thing, this internal belt here is pulling the ore up into presumably into the storage system at the top of it. Here we've got a belt coming down because we're pulling pulling resources out of it. That's um, interesting. I assume that's. Oh no, no, it's just that they they animate different ways and on different sides of the machine. So there's one up belt and one down belt. Never mind then. It wasn't it wasn't being quite as clever as I thought it was. Uh, this belt has now stopped because of this. This is this is full, presumably. Yes, there it is. It's full. Um, so th it, it, it's a silly thing to do. There's no point in doing that. But I went around putting in lots of these. There's another one over here for coal because we're using a lot of coal up as well, largely for paint. Um, I, it's been pointed out to me that I'm actually using a fairly expensive paint recipe. As they go, the uh, the blue one in the middle is actually the least. Uh, sorry, the green one in the middle is actually the least or the most expensive in terms of coal per spray. So this one only uses one coal and gets you two sprays. This one uses. Um, two coal for the two yellows and at least one coal for the diamond maybe two um yes two coal for the diamond so that actually uses four coal to make 24 sprays now they are slightly better you get um in that you get the uh, a higher productivity boost out of it and a higher spend or a higher speed up um but you're actually spending a lot more coal per paint or per paint spray with green than you are with yellow and then with this one apparently this is actually cheaper um so it's two of those. So it's eight. Uh, oh, yeah, because it's, you you get more than twice as many sprays out of that, um, and you can you and you can make the um, the the bucky tubes in a different way. So technically, yes, it's more expensive in resources overall, uh, even per spray, I think. Um, but if you use one of the better recipes for making the carbon nanotubes, it's cheaper in cheaper in coal. So that yeah, okay, there's there's some some truth. In that. So, yes, on this planet, that's basically all, all I did. I sort of, oh, oh, I think. Oh, no, I put in an extra paint production facility here. I fiddled with things a little bit. I don't think I really did very much else on this planet, though. But I did go off to another star system. So, as well as, um, I've, I've now gone off as well to Precipua over here. So, let's uh, view that, and we'll go to Precipua... Um, two first, I think. So, we'll go, we'll go there, cause, because that's what I did. So if we, uh, I'm in map mode, yes I am. If we take off and fly off to this, and one of the things I quite like, it was sort of the the ev inevitable advancements in technology, is now I basically almost don't, I think almost nothing, of flying off to a a different star system because all it means is you jump up into the air like this, uh, get your speed up to 300, whack the warp drive button like that, and boom. And it doesn't actually take all that long anymore. Going between planets originally, when I first started doing it, took quite a long time. I didn't like to do it in these videos because it took such a long time that I felt it was detracting from the video. So I'd speed up, speed it up and stuff like that. Uh, whereas now, it's much quicker and easier. It's just... Uh, it it, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter and the uh, the warp booster things are also really really cheap um, and I've even learned to actually just about land my ship uh, land my, my, my mech directly on a planet so this is Precipua 2 which we haven't named yet it was an annoying planet to build on because it's really really wet there's loads of swamp ev just about everywhere on it if I, if I try and go out map mode if I pay some 
thing in, like I don't know, the polar solar panels, you can see but with the dark patches, you can see just how difficult it is to find a nice big area of um, land to build on. So when I, when I wanted to put in the solar polar, the polar solar, um, it was a it was a it was a bit of a faff because I needed to clean up a bit of space to put them in. But that wasn't really why I came out. I came here because I wanted. I was worried about my coal supplies. And this being a very, very botanical planet, a, an oceanic jungle, as it says over there on the right-hand side, uh, there's loads and loads of coal here, like 17 million. So I came over here, I dropped in some of these massive drills and then put in a... I see some of these massive drills. I put in quite a lot of them. As you can see over here, there's about six of them over here, and another two elsewhere on the planet. I put in a silicon mine as well because chat encouraged me to, and I thought, well, I might as well. It, it, it's here, and that way I can claim it from other planets if I, if I start to need it later. Then over here, I whacked in a logistics tower. That's now filling up with coal, as you can see. But it's being taken away a bit at a time, as required. So I'm demanding it locally, supplying it remotely. That means it gets brought in by the uh, the drone. The, these mini drones in the uh, or the, the normal drones in in the tower they'll fly out to the to the coal mines grab the um grab the coal if I, can, <laughs> I can't find one and take it back to the tower where it can then be turned into where it can then be made ready to be taken away by the uh, the long range transport ships and taken off to other planets the other two reasons i the other reason i came to this 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 solar system is there is a gas giant up there um and this gas giant is a fire ice gas giant so i've dropped down some um collecting towers on there to start picking up the fire ice from there um, because also I wanted I want I was running out of running very very low on bucky sheets so I came out here um, out here in order to get some more of those and those are made those can those can, you, you can make them from carbon it's exp or from co from coal turned into carbon you can then and I think you then need acid as well so it's it's, it's kind of expensive and a bit of a faff to do it that way so instead there is an alternative recipe uh, which allows you to, well, if, you, if you can go out and recover some fire ice, which looks like a sort of weird candy flossy type substance, you can then turn that directly into bucky sheets in a chemical plant. So, I came over to this other planet, Precipua 3, which has massive de deposits of, fi of fire ice. There's, there's something like three of them that are about almost two million each. So, over here, we are somewhere on this somewhere on this planet we are digging up the fire ice and it's re again really really easy to do because i've got the new mining drills so i just dropped one of those in it's pulling it all up and then the drones fly over to these like this Shoomp. grab the fire ice and then they'll fly it round to the actual facilities over here where it's being used so we've got a tower here that's nice and full um and this is bringing in it's bringing in the fire ice, passing it down the um, down the system here. We're bringing in paint as well because I thought we might as well, especially after I, I gathered loads more coal. That's being stacked up, passed down here. These all these chemical plants are then turning that fire ice into um, I into bucky sheets, which is this 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 belt here, and also hydrogen. So I thought, well, I'm getting all this hydrogen. I might as well burn it for power. So we've got a load of these burner machines along here that are okay, collecting it, and then they're also passing it into this tower where. It would be being accumulated, except it's then also being passed out. Over, oh, it's over here to be turned into these pink crystals that are needed for something else as well. So, yeah, the uh, at the moment, I've actually got loads of bucky sheets. We've got more than we know what to do with of them. As you can see, the, 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 the uh, machine is filling up very, very quickly. The fire ice is bigger. So this is all great. We have lots and lots of bucky sheets. Now, I thought somewhere on this planet I was also doing um, the other step of the processing but it turns out I'm not so this is going to require another little journey so we're now going to go off back to a back to a system which you've seen before to over to Targaryen and I really need to rename Precipua so uh, leave, leave me some suggestions in the comments and I'll, I'll give it a, a different name and call it something a bit more um, interesting and weird and the thematically appropriate so I want to go over to I can't remember. I honestly can't remember whether it was Rhaegar or, or Daenerys um, in, in, over in Targaryen. So we'll uh, we'll try we'll try um, Rhaegar first and see if that's the correct one because I think it is. I'm just not sure. So again, 300 get up to 300 speed, speed to be second. In fact, then I can use the turbo the this boost thing and I can get up to a uh, quarter of oh a quarter of a light year per second. That's pretty quick actually. I'm impressed with how fast that is. But it's a long way out to uh, Targaryen, so I kind of need to go nice and quickly. That said, we are nearly there. So I was trying to go to Rhaegar, which is oops over there. No, let's pull out. Okay, I could, there, there was too much on-screen text. I couldn't see where the uh, the planet was, so I couldn't aim for it. Uh, is this the correct one? Let's find out. T touch down, then I can flick over to map view. Yes, this is the right one. Excellent. Uh, are you actually going to land? No, you're not. 
All right, let's let's fly over to the point where I can just poke at things and, and, and point to them a bit more effectively. Then, so yeah, Rhaegar was my first planet where I came out and started doing this fire ice mining, but it wasn't able to keep up um, because yeah, over here. So we are making the bucky sheets, and I've massively increased the rate these are being made at, and you can see the uh, you can see the blue belts zipping everything away. So they're bringing the uh, the bucky sheets over to. No, they're not. Yeah, the, so the the, uh, the the hydrogen again in the same way is being passed into all these burner burner uh, generators. So we're generating lots and lots of power there. That's great. It's keeping the system up and up and happy because we're quite a long way out from the sun here, so we don't get a great deal of um, solar power. The uh, bucky sheets that we're making here are all being brought round to here, and I've actually cut the belt off here that was taking them into the tower because I've decided I don't actually want that. The bucky sheets are going to be produced on a different planet. And then we're then passing all of those around here into these systems, into these uh, chemical plants, along with a, a supply of titanium, which now as I look at it is insufficient, but never mind. There is a supply of titanium being pushed in here, and that is allowing me to produce a steady stream of bucky tubes that are being flowed out here and going into this machine. So now as you can see, we've got... We've got quite a they're being made at a reasonable rate. The problem is that whilst we are making them at a reasonable rate, we're using them up at at least that rate. Now, I have to admit, I'm not quite certain whether we are producing them fast enough and we're just filling up buffers down over on Norvis, or whether they're um, they're being produced, whether we're still actually not producing them fast enough. It's kind of hard to tell. But I think I need to, one of the things I'm going to need to do is extend this titanium smeltery here, because we've got loads of the ore coming out. So extending, extending the smeltery is going to be relatively easy. It's just going to be a case of putting in a lot more uh, smelters and maybe speeding the belts up as well. Uh, so it's not going to be difficult, but it does need to be done because that is, as you, as you can see here, clearly the limiting factor. So if I can double the amount of um, titanium that's coming through, then hopefully some more of these machines... I can. I was going to say I can put, I can have all of these machines working. They are pretty m nearly all working already. So that's probably just going to mean I'm going to need to put in an extra belt, an extra uh, extra couple of rows of rows of chemical plants along here. But that's fine. I can do that, <coughs> and I can get this this tower here to start requesting. Um, Requesting bucky sheets instead of providing them, and then we'll be able to uh, pull them in from the other from over in, in Precipua and start pa pa and start piling them out to make these bucky sheets a bit faster, and then things will just generally go a bit better, a bit more efficiently, a bit more smoothly, a bit more nicely. So I think that's going to be my next. One of the things I need to do is going to be to bump this up a bit to make the bucky tubes a little bit faster. However, as we saw back on Norvis, the problem is not with the bucky tubes. The problem is with how fast I'm able to make the um, uh, the blue. Uh, the blue processors at the moment so that's also going to need to be upgraded and I think what I'm probably going to need to do is move all of that is, is, is uh, well probably not move it but add in additional um, an additional system that's making the uh, the blue processors a lot faster on another planet which will probably probably end up being silly or possibly Titan um, because those are the relatively local ones and if we have a look at the, uh, the, the stuff required to make them well, we need we need the normal processors. I think that might actually end up being a problem um, because I don't think we're making the Greek circuit board. So I think I think this is going to be one of those one of those chains where I have an incredibly where I go okay, we don't have enough blue circuits, so I'll build more machines to make those. Oh, that means we now don't have enough uh, yellow circuits, so I'll need to make more of those. Oh, that means I don't have enough blue cir green circuits, so I'll need to make more of those. And it's just gonna it's gonna propagate backwards as these things tend to. So maybe I'm, I'm going to be better off just going in and making all of making this up just just from raw materials uh, that's going to be a lot of raw materials though so i'm a little bit wary about that um yeah because there's a lot of different things going into this i mean so we've got we've got iron and copper goes into that one uh, in fact let, 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 let's start from the top so this one we need we need we need those so we need we need we need iron and copper for this one then we will need um electric components which is silicon and more copper for this one okay um, that's not actually that's not too bad. That that's that's that that feels manageable. So these processes, I reckon, I can make more of these without too much difficulty. Then we'll get onto these ones. But then we'll need to make more plain filters, and that was the problem before, which is uh, titanium glass, which is glass and titanium and water, and then these uh, Cas Casimir crystals, which if I'd, I'd probably actually use this recipe um, because I have loads of hydrogen. Uh, yeah, because titanium crystals are a pain to make. So yeah, we'll use this one. So we'll pull it. We need to pull in lots of these optical grating crystals, which I do have some mines for. We We've got some of those being dug up, um, and then graphene and lots and lots of hydrogen. So that, again, not too bad. I feel like this, yes, I feel like building up a new facility to make make circuit, make the uh, the blue processes in crazy quantities from raw ingredients is ambitious, but not going to be too, not going to be impossible. So 
yes, that can be my first project for next week. And then when I've done that and I discover I don't have enough bucky tubes, maybe I'll th maybe then I'll come out here and upgrade this further, and so so it can make them a lot faster, basically by upgrading this titanium mine, uh, titanium smeltery over here. So yes, that's going to be the plan for next week. Um, as I say, I have. I, I sort of have, have sort of finished the base game. Uh, this is the wrong. This is the wrong son. Let's look at this. Um, but I want to build this. I want to finish off this Dyson sphere before I call it actually done. And that needs obscene numbers of rockets. So that's going to be the big push, I think, uh, for trying to get this for trying to get this up and running. Um, yeah, it's going to be a big job. You'll you'll see me working on expanding things out rather than going off and doing new things, which is interesting in its own way because building at scale is very very different to just knocking together something small that will produce a gentle stream of whatever it is you need. So, I hope you'll come along and join me for that on Wednesday. That will be the uh, the next stream, 7.30pm UK time. There'll also be a stream on Monday evening. Uh, that's the Factorio Space Exploration and uh, Crastorio 2 stream, the uh, the other one. The one you'll have presumed probably seen the, the videos for yesterday and the day before. And if you haven't, they're very worth checking out. These um, update videos come out every uh, at the weekend, so there's a Friday and Saturday, as I say, is the uh, is the Factorio ones, and then Sunday for the Dyson Sphere program one. Um, and there are GTA videos coming out regularly again now, and r random other videos coming out um, here h hither and yon as on on Tuesdays, depending on when I, basically when I have the uh, time time to make them. If you want to see those a bit earlier, make sure you're a channel supporter, so that means uh, be a, chip, a Twitch member, a YouTube subscriber, or drop in a, a donation on uh, set, set up a donation on uh, Ko-Fi. Um, links to all of that in the description, and um, then you get and then oh, and come and join the Discord as well because that's where I post the links to it. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you as ever. For, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>